I check, mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Good, Gretchen? We're okay? Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We are here at the Emergency Operations Center in Jefferson Parish in Gretna. I'm Parish President Cynthia Lee Shang. Today is August 29th, 2021 at 1 p.m. I want to introduce Shari from the Deaf Action Center. She is um, going to be signing from, I believe, her home. We did not want her to take on dangerous conditions to be here, so I believe um, she is there and you're able to see her. I want to introduce the people I'm honored to be here with today. Um, the Director of Emergency Management, Mr. Joe Valiente. Our Director of Public Works, Mark Drews. Our Chief Administrative Assistant, Sarah Babcock. Our Fire Service Director, Brian Adams, is the chief here. The chief's probably on, um, in the, on the East Bank, correct? Okay. And then Councilman at Large um, for Division A, Ricky Template. No, he was. He was just here, so he just left a few minutes ago. Um, Councilman at Large for Division B, our, ch our Council Chairman, Scott Walker. Councilman for District 1, Marion Edwards. I just got off the phone with him within the last hour. He is in his district. Um, Councilman for District 2, Councilman Dino Bonanno is here. Our Councilman for District 3, Councilman Byron Lee, is here. And then I was just on the phone with Councilman Impostato for District 4. Uh, he was trying to get over here. On his way here, a sign blew off of a building, uh, and the wind conditions started picking up, so he needs to stay back in his district. And I was also on the phone with Councilman Van Riken, who said the wind started really um, gaining a lot of um, traction. So she she's going to stay back in her district. So it's difficult for those council members to, to make the track here to the West Bank and they need to be back home in their district. So um, we're here at the EOC. You'll notice here we're on generator power. We keep going back and forth to generator power and the feed. Um, that is what you see happening in our, our upper Jefferson. Um, our water system, we went on generator power proactively so that we would not lose pressure if we lost the power. So that was a proactive move by us. And I'm just going to give updates as the way they've been going in this, this morning. Causeway, we closed that at 11 a.m. Certainly, the status of the weather, our eyes have all morning been on Grand Isle. We have people there on Grand Isle. Uh, our concern from the beginning has been this level of storm surge um, for, for that island and the people who chose to remain on it. We are in touch. We just were in touch with them. We're still um, via radio contact in touch with them. Um, they are at the... We were in touch with the um, fire station. The fire station is taking on uh, water now. Um, now, what you're seeing in Grand Isle, you're going to start seeing coming up this way. So our attention is quickly on Lafitte, and the, deter the um, conditions will begin deteriorating and have um, deteriorated in Lafitte, and that is going to come up our way. So this is what we're looking at. Electrical outages, as you would imagine, are happening very frequently, every time we check, it's probably gone up since I just last checked. Um, 10 minutes ago, it's 46,000 that were out. We just checked right before I got to the podium. It was 54,000 um, customers with that power. So this is what we are actually, you know, expect for this kind of storm. So right here in Upper Jefferson, we will start feeling these impacts that the Lower Jefferson has starting to feel very quickly. And we are going to be at this for quite some time. We already had a Jefferson Parish leadership call this morning with over 100 participants, so we are in touch with our partners. We are in touch with our stakeholders. The communication channels are there uh, so that we can respond um, very closely. Obviously, in Grand Isle, as I mentioned, our eyes are on them. We have gotten requests for rescue for people who stayed on the island, obviously. And I, I mentioned white caps are on the highway. Our fire station's taking water. Uh, on Grand Isle, obviously, first responders cannot get to you. So those folks are just going to have to hunker down um, and wait for the storm to pass before it's safe and before we can get to them in Grand Isle. Um, and the, the, also the concern, again, for Lafitte. I just saw the mayor. We are in touch with him um, in Lafitte. And they are, will begin um, seeing these conditions deteriorate rapidly. S was on the phone with Sheriff Joseph Lapinto. He is stationed on the East Bank. Um, I want to thank him and his officers. They proactively went down to Lafitte. 
Lower Lafitte, Barataria, and Crown Point yesterday evening to identify, even though we had uh, a mandatory evacuation, to identify um, people that are still um, in Lafitte. So I want to thank him for that. They went house to house with a few dozen officers, identifying people's names, their phone number, where they live, and the number of people in the house. So we want to thank him for that, and I thank, you know, our first responders are so strong in Jefferson Parish, that proactive move so they know immediately and are ahead of the game for search and rescue. Again, Upper Jefferson, the conditions will start to deteriorate rapidly. The threats that we have been saying will start, you will start seeing them now, okay? So the wind, the rain, the flash flooding, and the overall power outages will happen. Um, we've already had a report of an animal tied to a tree that our, our animal protection services have had to respond to. Animals need to be inside. We cannot pick up animals now. We are not going out. But all animals, um, if, if their lives are going to be spared, they need to be brought inside. And this, this animal is tied to a tree. So thank goodness we were able to uh, rescue that animal before conditions worsened. If you're going to stay at home, please stay inside. Find the safest place in your home, an interior room, away from windows, away from skylight, away from glass doors, away from anything, projectiles flying outside that could break um, into your home that way. Understand how the trees are around your home. We expect a lot of fallen trees. A tree could fall on your house. You don't want to be in that location on your house. So you have to be strategic in where you're going to ride out this storm. We are prepared for post-storm recovery. Our teams are, are ready, our, our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, and we're so fortunate to have the Louisiana National Guard here to help our first responders out. Um, I will tell you, this is, not, this is a difficult time right now for these officers. They are used to responding. They are used to doing what they do best. And right now, they're stuck just waiting. So I think what you're seeing all of us feel is um, a rush of adrenaline um, to try to do something. Um, but we're stuck where we are right now. We have to wait this storm out. But the teams are ready, and they're strategizing about how they are going to clear roads get the roads accessible, and begin their assessment and their rescue. I want to just state something that we want to keep only life-threatening, very serious, very critical issues to our 911. So if it's, again, if it's life-threatening, it's down power lines, it's something very dangerous in our community, or if you are suffering from something that needs immediate attention, they are not going to be able to respond all the time during the storm, but it is appropriate to call 911. If it's a less critical issue, let's try to be smart about not overwhelming the 911 line. So if it's something having to do with um, a, a tree down, but it's not impacting the roadway, or as I said, animals, or just oxygen distribution, or some resources that you need, please call our Emergency Operations Center at 504-349-5360. Again, 911 for crisis situations, life-threatening situations, the less serious conditions, and we want to know everything. We're going to have teams out there assessing all the roads. So, um, you know, if there's a tree down on a major road, don't bother to call. Our teams are going to get there. They're going to go look at those major highways. It, they, they, they know they have a plan, so you don't have to um, call on that. But any less serious condition, let's keep it out of the 911 calls and, and call 504-349-5360. A reminder, we have no transit, no paratransit tomorrow. Uh, a reminder also that our offices are closed on Monday and the schools are closed on Monday. Okay, so with that, I'm going to invite up our Director of Emergency Management Services, Mr. Joe Valiente. And I just, let me go back. I forgot to do this with my notes. Okay, so right now we have 54,000 power outages. Of course, all of the electricity is out on Grand Isle. All of the electricity is out in Lafitte. And now, I mean, this is growing, but on the West Bank, Estelle, Manhattan and Harvey, Woodmere, Terrytown, major outages on the East Bank, Harahan, Elmwood, Jefferson, Metairie Terrace, Kenner, Airline, and um, around Lafreniere Park. Um, I want to uh, notice that um, acknowledge Councilman Templet, who just returned, and I don't know if I mentioned um, Senator um, Pat Connick is also here with us at the EOC. So you will hear um, from some members of our council in a little bit. But next up... Uh, is um, our Director of Emergency Management, Mr. Joe Valiente. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. I'll be brief. Um, 
As you know, it was a cat 450 miles an hour when it made landfall at Port uh, Fouchon, and now it's working its way toward the northwest, and it will s severely impact the Jefferson, the upper Jefferson Parish area. Um, we've been working very closely with all our local partners in the levee districts and the flood protection agencies, and so we have a good handle. All the flood gates have been closed and locked in hopes that we can minimize the amount of flooding that's going to occur. Um, the threats that we've been talking about for three days are now a reality, and the risks are real. The wind, the rainfall, and the power outages. The majority of the power outages, we are being told, are being caused by trees that are falling. So, again, the parish president mentioned that. Do not venture out and get anywhere near those trees and those power lines that are entangled in them. That's extremely dangerous. I just want to mention again that we have high water vehicles that are stationed in strategic locations and the Louisiana Air National Guard and the West Bank Volunteer uh, Fire Departments under Brian Adams will be coordinating their efforts for any search and rescue that occur afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to mention that we have our essential duty employees are uh, on standby and have been sheltered and the moment that it's safe for them to get out and start their uh, damage assessment runs, they will do so. And that is all I have to say. I do want to say real quickly, though, I said, now is not the time to become complacent. Stay with us for another 36 hours. Stay indoors. Don't venture out on the streets. And do not venture out after the storm passes. Give us time to get an assessment on what needs to be repaired and to get those roads open and those traffic lights up and up and running. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Next up, we will have our Director of Public Works, Mr. Mark Drews. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we'll start with drainage uh, first. Right now, we're in very good shape. Fortunately, over the last 12 hours on the east and west bank, we've had basically one inch or less of rain. So all our canal levels are very low right now. We have full pumping capacity right now. And again, as a preemptive strategy, all our major pump stations, we've already transferred to generator power so we can avoid the potential of uh, a loss of pumping capacity temporarily if we would have had an outage later. Uh, similarly, uh, we did the same thing with our two water plants uh, because if we have that drop in pressure, it can have a detrimental effect on our hospitals. So our two plants are on generator power already, uh, and they're, they're performing fine. Uh, our biggest issue, uh, again, is also going to be the energy power outages. Uh, as we've said before, it is important that you stay off the streets because if your area doesn't have power, then those traffic signals do not work, okay? And we will not be able to attempt to restore uh, any of our traffic signals probably until Monday. Uh, the same thing with our sewer system. Again, every time the power goes out, we have 500 small lift stations uh, throughout the parish. So the areas where we have no power, those lift stations do not function. So we're asking right now that you please conserve uh, the water that goes down your drain, which basically try not to do wash unless you need to or take long showers. Because even though you may have power in your area and your lift station is working, our uh, lift stations are interconnected. So you may be pumping to a lift station that is out. Uh, but other than that, Public Works is ready. Uh, we'll be ready to respond. As they said, we have people pre-positioned, so we will immediately go out, uh, assess the damages, and start clearing our roads and streets so we can start the recovery process. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Our next speaker is Chief Administrative Assistant Sarah Babcock. Good afternoon. This morning we've been in close contact with all of our health care facilities. We already have multiple hospitals and nursing homes across the parish who are operating on generator power, but all of them are able to currently provide essential services and, and people are safe there. Um, we've continued to remind everyone how full our hospitals are, and today we had a hospital in Region 3 that had to evacuate and move into the hospitals here in Jefferson Parish. So they are, are extra full at the moment, and so as Madam 
uh, parish president said it is really important that we um, not go to the emergency room unless it is a life-threatening emergency. As I mentioned yesterday, after this storm, we will have oxygen tanks for distribution. If your oxygen tank is empty, you can bring it to these sites and we will uh, replace it with a new one. These sites are not open today. They will only open after all of the streets are safe and the threat has, has passed. And so we will announce that opening when it comes. But these sites are Fire Station 20 at 4110 Hudson Street in Metairie and Fire Station 81 at 808 MacArthur Avenue in Harvey. Um, we are also preparing to open shelters uh, post-storm for people who need them. Just a reminder, these will be congregate settings in local recreation centers. It may not be um, luxury accommodations, um, but it will be there for people who need it. Anyone who has medical special needs needing a shelter will be transported outside of the region post-storm uh, to areas in northern Louisiana to medical shelters there. If you believe that you will need to go to a shelter after the storm, please call 504 349-5360 and we will triage um, based on needs and um, assess whether or not it's appropriate for you to go to a shelter. We will continue to reiterate generator safety at every press conference throughout the storm because this is um, a high cause of death. Generators need to be set up outdoors, away from windows, doors, air conditioning units, and you, when you need to refuel them, please allow it to cool completely before adding more fuel. Also, if you're using generators right now, um, you know, it may not be the safest time to go out and refuel in the middle of the storm, particularly if there are trees in your yard nearby. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, as I mentioned, our first responder communities are waiting for the time that they can go out and, and um, engage in search and rescue. As I mentioned before, Sheriff Joseph Lapinto is on the East Bank. Our fire chief, um, Chief Tibbetts, is on the East Bank. Um, we also have the Louisiana National Guard here, and they'll work in conjunction with our West Bank Volunteer Fire Company. So with that, I want to introduce our Fire Services Director, Mr. Brian Adams. Thank you. As the parish president said, tomorrow morning at daylight, we will get out and assist the other departments across the parish with clearing streets so you'll see us out with chainsaws and, and just clearing the roadway so if we need to get to an emergency, we can. We'll clear those roadways for us, the sheriff's office, our EMS service, and whatever it takes for us to get along the roadways. Also tomorrow morning at daylight, we will set up a, uh, an area in Lafitte where we're going to be prepared just in case the water came up and we'll need to rescue people uh, out of their homes or whatever may happen in Lafitte. So along with the National Guard, the Sheriff's Office, and our firefighters on the West Bank, as well as some of the members from the East Bank, will be, uh, we'll hit the ground ready to go tomorrow morning for those rescues. So with that, that's all we have. All, stay inside, as everyone else has said up here today. I mean, stay inside. Give us time to get out there tomorrow and do what we have to do. Thank you. Okay, obviously our council members is the governing authority in Jefferson Parish. We're very fortunate that they are um, working with us. Their staffs are out. They've been out all morning. So with that, um, our, our council chairman, Councilman Scott Walker, will address you, followed by Councilman at Large for Division B, Ricky Template, and then Councilman for District 2, Dino Bonanno, and then Councilman um, for District 3, Councilman Byron Lee. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, I'll be brief. Again, there's not much more that I can say today that I haven't said in the past two days, except to repeat a couple of things. Here at the EOC in Gretna, we get a nice snapshot of what's going on in the parish. And what we see right now, as you've heard, is that Grand Isle and Lafitte are dealing with a lot, and they're going to continue to deal with a lot. And what they're dealing with now is going to affect us later in the day. So while it might not look terrible outside in Upper Jefferson right now, it will be terrible at some point in the day. So do not think that because this has made landfall and you're seeing Grand Island Lafitte get hammered that you're not going to get affected later in the day as well. It is coming and conditions will quickly deteriorate in Upper Jefferson Parish as the day moves on. We are here at the EOC. My fellow council members have been on the phone and on the internet and answering emails and monitoring social media and that's what we're here to do. So if you have problems, contact us. We're here, we're listening, and we're ready to help you get through any troubles that you may have. But this is far from over. As Mr. Adams said, 
Please stay inside. Don't make it more difficult on our first responders. And please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. He spoke on behalf of our council members. As I mentioned, Councilman Edwards, I've been in touch with him in District 1, Councilman Van Rankin and Councilman Impostato on the East Bank, and they really um, did not, should not be coming over to the West Bank right now. It is not safe conditions. So with that, does anybody have any questions? Brina? Uh, it's difficult. No, we were in touch with our fire, um, our, our firefighters in Grand Isle. We, we were glad that we were still in touch with them, um, but everybody is inside, so it's a little bit too early to to understand what's going on. Um, Mayor Carmadell told me last night that, in addition to some first responders that are on the island, he thinks that you know a total of 40 people are there. But everybody is, um, as I said, we're getting requests for rescue. Um, but I do not know the status of those people, and I don't know if even they know the status of those people. Um, the first responders on the island know that yet. Look, it looks very bad. We have a camera that was um, here at the EOC that was on the island. We lost that at five o'clock. Uh, some of the council members were were found found cameras. It looks very very difficult. Uh, we're seeing some private company cameras that we're finding, um, but the conditions are very very bad right now in Grand Isle. They are really um, getting beaten up right at this moment. So. So the surge is very high. Uh, the roads have been impassable for a while. Uh, we did get reports early on, which we expected that, you know, they're used to storms. They've been through so many, but that water was coming in areas that normally don't even take on water. So, of course, this is a different storm. Um, at the fire station, it, it, it crossed the road, and it's, it's um, on the bottom floor of the fire station. But that's an open kind of area. On one okay. Here. Councilman Walker is saying we got reports at six feet on Highway 1, which is the only road in. Yes. And again, we probably won't be able to assess those conditions for quite some time on Grand Isle. Now, just a reminder, and we keep saying this, the secondary effects of this storm um, are just as dangerous. So right now in Upper Jefferson, we have not um, started seeing it. You know, conditions are starting to get worse, but it's going to be a long, long day. Um, but please, please, our first responders are here and ready to do their job. We have to work as a community, give them free access to the roads, let them assess the roads, let them get the trees off the roads, let them assess for down power lines. Please do not go out. I know everybody's going to have cabin fever when this is all over with, but we have got to be smart about this. We have got to work together as a community, and we all say we support law enforcement and first responders. We need to show that action now. But if you don't have a critical issue, you're going to stay put, and you're going to do your part for our first responders. They do not need extra people on the road. They do not need extra car accidents that don't need to happen. They do not need to be responding to any post-storm injury. Let them respond to the injuries that are happening during the storm. So this is... My plea of you as a community, let's give and work with our first responders and let's stay out of their way so they can do their job, please. Any other questions? Okay. Everybody be safe. Thank you very much. We will be in touch. Again, um, text 888-777. Text JP Alert to 888-777 or for our Spanish-speaking citizens, JP Noticias to 888-777, and we will um, be in touch with you on our next briefing. Thank you.